Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you and we praise you. You are good and loving. You have only our best interests at heart. Take our hand and lead us. Show us the way to go. Like a child being carried in a loving parent's arm, let us relax and trust in you. We know that you will never lead us astray. You are above all, know all, and see all, yet you hear us as if we are your only creation. May we not view you as a distant father, but as one who has come to earth and understands the challenges and temptations of our lives. Be near us today and whisper reminders that you are close and holding us as your children. Our friends and family need you today, Father, as they make difficult decisions in their workplaces, schooling, and within their families. Please show them that you are the, that you are closer than their earthly father as they go throughout their day. Thank you, Father, for hearing us and listening to our pleas. Thank you for the assurance of never leading us off course. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, ladies. I'm not sure how many of you are watching the actual live right now because it is pretty early. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to open this on my computer. Uh, Uh, right? I think I got it. Nope. No, I don't. <laughs> Good morning, Tasha. Good morning. Okay, I, I swear I always pronounce your name wrong. Is it Latasia? Sure. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning, Latoya. Morning, Nicole and Stacy. Yes, yeah, served by Jermaine Dolly. I actually just heard that song yesterday, so I added it to the list. <laughs> I've never heard that song, I think, prior to listening to it yesterday. But yeah, we're diving into the Gospel of John today. I'm hoping this will only take two hours, but chapter one, I think, has 51 verses, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 51 verses. So I'm hoping I can do all of this in one video instead of having to split it up because I just want to get it in one video. Um, my son is home. So, yes, bubs. <laughs> what do you want? You want to say hi? Say hi. They can't hear you. They can't see you. Just say hi. They can hear you. Say hi. Hi. Okay. What do you want? <laughs> I want the poo poo. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so yeah, my little one is home. Um, he was supposed to be with his father for the whole summer. Well, at least for the month of July, which is why I scheduled us to do the live sessions on Tuesdays. But he'll be home every Monday and Tuesday. So, <laughs> excuse him. Um, hopefully he doesn't interrupt as much because I just want to fly through this. Um, because it's so long. But... I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just looking at the comments because it's not popping up on my phone. So I have to look at the computer. Okay, so, yeah, I'm just hoping we can get through this by 12. Um, at least 12.30, 12.45, the latest. So, if I don't look at the comments too often, it's because I really just want to try to get all of this done in one video. Um, but if I can't, of course, I definitely will just do the pre-recorded video with the second half. So we're going to be doing chapter one today, hopefully all 51 verses, and I have all the notes and everything prepared because I knew this was going to be a long one. I did add paper in between um, my, the, between the scriptures, sorry, um, and I did post a video on YouTube about that, and I believe um, Angela has a video as well on her channel on how to do this, but uh, yeah, I just added paper because I knew that this was going to be a long one. The notes are 11 pages long, so you will get an 11-page PDF if I don't change or add anything. Um, but yeah, as of now, the notes are literally 11 pages long. So yeah, we're, we're, we're going to get through this. So it's 10-16. Um, give me one quick second to go check on my little one before we dive in. So give me a second, guys. <laughs> All right. 
So of course I have my pins. Um, today I have this one here. It's the Zebra F301 ballpoint pen in a 0.7 millimeter. I've tried their um, gel pen, the black one. Not too fond of it, but I do kind of like the ballpoint pen. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, so I have that. I also have the Micron Pigma 01. I believe this is a 0.25 if I'm not mistaken. So I have that. And then the Sharpie pen in black. Just a basic black one. Just in case. I do have the Crayola Super Tips. Because you guys know I like to use those. My Sharpie Smear Guard highlighters. And then all of my Zebra Mount, Zebra Mount liners are here. I only have three sticky notes here just because I have this extra page. So, a regular post-it here. And then I have these two um, emoji ones that I got from Walmart with the unicorn and the mermaid. Just because it's summer, so why not? And um, another thing that I'm incorporating are stickers. If you guys didn't see my sticker haul, I posted up a sticker haul. Um, and I do use a lot of stickers in my Bible journals, um, my planners, and in my prayer journal. I haven't used any in this one as of yet, so I do have a bunch just sitting here. Um, literally just a bunch of these. And I did haul all of these already on the channel, so that should be up. But I have all of those here just in case I want to add some color, if I even have time to do that. But um, let's just dive in. So we are going to start off with... Um, I'm going to read through verses 1 through seven, one through 18, right? Yeah, 1 through 18. Let me make sure this is in frame. So, 1 through 18, the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning. All things were made through Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness had not has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light and I'm sorry, about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own people he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him, and cried out, This was he of whom I said, Who... He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. Far from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm getting back into the swing of this, so just bear with me. But that was verses 1 through 18. Now, in my other Bibles, like my King James and I think my my um, my New King James and I believe my King James, these are actually separated. So, like, 1 through 5 is one paragraph. Then you have 6 through, um, I think this is 13. That's another kind of section. And then 14 to 18 is another section. But the ESV compiles it all together. So, yeah. So... I read through it, so now we're going to do what I normally do, which is circle words that I want to define. So, I have beginning. Was, and I know that sounds crazy, but I have was that I wanted to circle. So, I have beginning was word. Life. Um, where was that at? I have sent, which is in verse 6. Witness. Um, 
down to verse 11, I have received. And the last word I have. No, it's not the last word, is it? Yes, the last word I have was dwelt. So. Beginning was word, life, sent, witness, receive, and dwelt. So, in the first verse, we have beginning was in word. In the fourth verse, we have life. In the sixth verse, we have sent. In the seventh is witness. Down to the eleventh verse, we have receive. And in verse 14, I circled dwelt. And those are just words I personally circled. Of course, you would have your own words that you wanted to define, but those are just the ones that I had picked. And I know that the camera tends to autofocus on and off when I have my hand in the way, so that's why I'm going to move my hand out of the way a lot. But, um, okay, so to break these words down. Now, I'm not the best with pronouncing the Greek pronunciation of these words, so I'm not even going to attempt it. I will write them out though so that you can see. So starting off with beginning, the Greek word I believe is archai or arche, and the meaning of the um, meaning of that word is basically origin, rule, initial starting point, or preeminent. The English definition of that word is the point in time or space at which something starts. So I'm just going to use this sticky note here to put my definitions. So beginning Greek word RK, I think that's how you pronounce it, RK. meaning and let me know how you like the um setup i ended up ordering another tripod i have so many tripods it's ridiculous but i ended up ended up ordering a um flexible tripod that i can actually hook onto one of my backdrop stands so i had that up because i know before when i was using my uh ring light selfie ring thing it was a little bit too shaky so let me know if this works better um but yeah so it means origin Initial starting point preeminent, right? Yeah, so the next word is was, and I know this sounds ridiculous to do was, I know. Um, I didn't do it at first. I didn't have that circled, but after I did some research, um, I found that it was a very key word in that first verse. That's why I ended up circling it. So the Greek word for was is am I, I believe it is. And, um, basically it means I exist. I am, I have been, I was, and obviously the English definition is a past tense meaning exist. So Greek word. I think it's emi, if I'm not mistaken. Meaning I exist. I am, I have been. Or I was. And uh, for those who are new to the group, who are new to the live, who will watch the live later or on YouTube, I just want to break down why I look up the um, original language. So, first of all, how do you tell what the original language of the scripture is? The Old Testament um, from Genesis to Malachi 
is mainly written in Hebrew, but I do know that some of the minor prophets, if I'm not mistaken, are written in Aramaic. And all of the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation is all Greek. So the reason why I look up the original language of a word is because a lot of the time in English, we change the, the meaning of a word. And the Greek or Hebrew original language would have a different meaning. And I want to understand the context of the scripture in the language that it was originally written, not in the English translation, if that makes sense. So that's why I normally always look up the Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic word. And it helps me to um, not take scripture out of context or misuse it. I know as a kid, I most likely did misuse scripture a lot, but... Um, Knowing what I know now, all the tips and tools and ways to study, I understand scriptures a lot more like um, the parable of the sower. I never fully understood that scripture. Um, I would hear it a lot in church as a kid and obviously as a teen and adult. But it wasn't until I actually took the time to study Luke and break it down that I fully grasped what it meant. So that's pretty much why I um, look up the definitions in their original language. So moving on to word. Word is basically logos in um, Greek, and it's basically speech or divine utterance. So, Yes, Chris. Okay, but mommy's recording. Okay, I'm coming. Go ahead. I'm coming. I'm coming. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the next one is life. I'm coming, Jay. Okay, sorry guys. I'm going to pause for a second to go see what the little one wants. Okay, so life is the next word. And that is gr the Greek word for life is the way. And it's spelled Zoe, but the uh, Z, I mean the O and the E have like accents over them. And it's basically life on a physical or spiritual level. And the English definition of that is the quality that distinguishes a vital function and being from a dead body. So, meaning life on a physical or spiritual level. Oh, I'm sorry, Pamela. I'm just seeing this. But yeah, it'll definitely be posted up later. I always keep the lives up um, and then I will post this on YouTube on Thursday before I do the chapter two pre-recording. So, yes, you can definitely check this out later. And I hope all goes well at the doctor's appointment for you. Good morning, Gladys. I'm just seeing this, guys. Okay. So that's life. The next word was sent. I know someone on YouTube asked me why I don't um, already write out my definitions prior to doing these live sessions, but I like to do everything on camera. Um, I already have my notes just so the videos are not super long with me researching everything. But um, when it comes to actually like writing my notes in the Bible, I prefer to do that on camera so you guys can see. I don't know. I just feel like that's more um, authentic, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> But the Greek word, I can't even pronounce this Greek word, so um, you, you'll see it because it's a long one. So I'm not even going to attempt to. So the Greek word is this one here that I'm getting ready to write. Uh, 
uh, Apostolaminos. I'm probably saying that wrong, but <laughs> it means to commission. To order. One to go. Oh, to order one to go to, sorry, a place appointed. Then we have witness. And it means evidence giving what one testifies. Let me see if I can fix this camera a bit and bring this down. So I'm just not leaning so far up. That just got completely slanted, but whatever. Um, so witness, the Greek word is martudia. It means evidence given and what one testifies. Okay, I just ended up locking the door because he's not going to not. Um, he's just going to continue coming in here because he's my son. So <laughs> I just locked and closed the door. But um, the last word is, oh, sorry, not the last word. We still have one more after this. So we have receive. Greek word for that is another word that I can't pronounce. If I was to take a gander, I would say paralambano. Because that's how it's spelled. It means to admit or acknowledge, to take to, or to join to oneself. So. Moving that aside, the last word is dwelt, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, dwelt. Greek word, skino. I'm probably saying it wrong. Which means to have one's tent. So dwelt is um, to have one's tent, to encamp, to reside, or to occupy. So these are all the definitions down for verses 1 through 18. Now let's go on to breaking it down. Hey, Leona. Hey, Robin. You're welcome, Pamela. 
I feel like this is not going to get completed today. Um, I might have to just pre-record the last part, but we'll see. <laughs> um, okay. So now I'm doing the verse by verse breakdown. Before I do that, obviously I want to add some color in my life. I keep forgetting to do that. So beginning... I decided to use some other colors probably not gonna oh okay it didn't bleed through I mean there's slight bleed through I don't know if you guys can see that right well it's not coming up on camera too bad but um yeah right here it's not that bad so okay I normally just stick to the lighter colors but today we're just gonna we're gonna go with it you know and I do this so that everything just doesn't make my eyes hurt because when everything is all black, it just doesn't look right to my eyes. And I personally just love color. Some of these are terrible because I took these from my son. I probably should just use my own, right? Right, so... Yeah, some of these nubs are terrible, so <laughs> once I use them here, I'm just not going to ever use them again. That one is fine. There we go. Got some color on the page. Let me just check. That one was messed up. Is this one messed up? Nope, not that bad. Okay. So now I can do what I need to do next. And um, you might hear me chewing. I have some cherries and grapes just here just to, to snack on. Um, but okay, so the first thing i'm going to underline is in the beginning just that within itself is important to me and i really believe it's important and um again let me just check and make sure this is all good in frame yes it is so in the beginning is just one thought i'm also going to underline was the word separately and then the last portion of verse one is the word was with God and the word was God. So again, I have in the beginning underlined as one thought. So let's go with some color. Um, let's use some pink. So I'm just going to take this pink smear God and underline in the beginning. I'm going to take the green one and underline was the word. And we're going to go with my favorite purple. This purple is just so pretty because it comes off like a lavender. And underline that last portion. And just so you guys can see, um, there really is no bleed through. There's a bit of ghosting, but it's not bad at all. So, super tip markers from Crayola and Sharpie's Mirror God highlighters are, like, awesome. I will say, though, don't push too hard because then it will bleed through. But, um, just enough that it'll get on to the page and give you color. Okay, so starting off with in the beginning. So, my notes read, this deliberately recalls the opening words of Genesis, which implicitly emphasizes the identity of Christ and it's referencing the time before creation. So, like I said, we define the beginning... And we understand that beginning, the Greek word is RK, meaning origin, initial starting point, preeminent, um, which then goes back to the time before creation. Because in the beginning, if we go to that scripture, which is Genesis 1, yes, Genesis 1, 1.
Genesis 1 1 reads in the beginning literally the same three words and um, I think it's key to understand that the gospel according to John opens up with the same words that the book of Genesis opens up with so where do I want to put that notes I'm gonna write it over here so Deliberately recalls the opening words of Genesis 1 1. This implicitly emphasizes the identity of Christ. Now I do have some cross references for that, but let's get some color. I actually kind of like this pen better than the Pentel, actually. <laughs> um, if you guys don't know, I use the Pentel RSVP pen a lot in my Bible. Um, but I think I like this one a little bit better. It's the Zebra F301 ballpoint. Um, make sure you get the right one if you get this, because they do have a gel pen that looks just like this that I actually own. But this one is the ballpoint, so I actually do like this a lot better. I wonder if they make this in a .5 tip. Cause that'd be cool but um okay so in the beginning it deliberately deliberately recalls the opening words of genesis 1 and 1 and it implicitly emphasizes the identity of christ so this is telling me that christ was before the time of creation so he was there before that um i also have other cross references i'm not going to go through all of them but you will get all of the cross references in the printable but um i'm going to go to colossians one and 17 through 18 and it says and he is before all things and in him all things hold together and he is the head of the body the church he is the beginning the first one from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent we know that beginning and preeminent are the same meaning um the same word so going to revelations um there are a few in Revelations. I'm probably just going to read two of those so we're not spending hours <laughs> doing cross-references because I have so many cross-references. It's ridiculous. But um, Revelations 1 and 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. I have 1 and 17, which reads, When I saw him, I fell at his feet. As though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Um, and I'm not going to read the other two, but the other two are Revelations 21 and 6, and also Revelations 22 and 13, which all basically helps to identify um, the whole beginning portion. So, those cross references I will write here. So, Colossians 1, 17 through 18. So I have Revelations 1, verse 8, verse 17. Revelations 21, 6. And then it was 22. 13. Okay. So 
so there we go that's all just for in the beginning so again in the beginning it deliberately recalls the opening words of genesis 1 and 1 which it implicitly emphasizes the identity of christ and these other other cross references besides um genesis 1 and 1 Sorry guys, I'm just looking at the comments now. <laughs> I know the feeling when you have a really pretty Bible. I'm actually um working on ordering me probably like three more journaling Bibles because yeah, um I'm gonna be doing a Bible giveaway soon on my YouTube channel. Um which is gonna be a journaling Bible and um I think I want to get some more highlighters and stuff. I don't know. I have a lot of ideas in my head. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yes, I definitely know what you want to write in it, but then you don't because it's so pretty. That's how I felt about the uh, CSB Study Bible for Women. It was just so pretty that I was only using the older version, the HCSB one, to highlight in. But I got over that because I needed to write some stuff down. Um, I think that's why I prefer journaling Bibles because I don't feel as bad in a journaling Bible when I write because it's, you know, created to write notes. But I do know the feeling. And yeah, I, I, I never used to write in all my Bibles, but now I do. Um, whether it's just like underlining or but like notes. I don't think I write notes in all of my Bibles. Do I? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Moving on to was the word. So, the word existed before creation or time. The word is a being that was with God at the beginning of time. So, we know that was means, let me just stick this here so that I can always reference back to these uh, definitions. So, was basically means I exist, I am, I have been, I was. And word basically is speech or divine utterance. But word is capitalized, so we understand that word is an actual person. Um, it's either going to be a person, please. So it's a person. So it was there at the beginning of time, which is the initial point before creation with God. And it's not only there before time, but it's an actual being that was beside God at the time of creation. So uh, what I'm going to write is, oh, I don't want to cross over here. <laughs> But I'm going to write it here. So, the word existed because we know that was means I exist, I am, I have been, I was. So, the word existed before creation. And how do we know that it existed before creation? Because it says in the beginning was the word. So, beginning means the time prior to creation. So, uh, the word existed before creation. It is a being that was with God. At beginning of time and I shorthand in my Bible when I don't have space um, again I think I said I, I think I said this before but I'm gonna do a video about shorthand writing because I learned how to shorthand from debate I was on a debate team for I think two years in high school so I learned how to like write my notes shorthandedly so yeah at the beginning of time I'm definitely gonna run out of space but thank God for this sheet of paper here <laughs> um okay so i need to figure out a way to do this there we go but i also have cross references so yep okay so the word existed before creation it is a being that is that was at i'm sorry the word existed before creation. It is a being that was with God at the beginning of time. Cross references I have for that are John 1 and 14, which um, it says the word became flesh and the, dwelt among us. Then I have 1 John 1 and 1.
1 John 1 and 1, which says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And Revelations 19, 13. Pen went just under there. Okay, you can never have so too much space. I swear, I never have enough space to so um, maneuver. But nineteen and verse thirteen. Um, he is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. So the Word of God is clearly a person. It is a being. It's separate from God, but it was also there at the beginning with God. Um, where am I going to put these cross references so that I still have space to, <laughs> I'm going to write my note for that here. So, um, for this one, I have John chapter one, verse 14, first John one and one in Revelations 19, 13. And um, I think it's key to understand that most of these cross references, when they come from out of Revelations or first, second, third John, they're all still written by the actual Apostle John, um, John the disciple. He wrote the gospel according to John. He also wrote first, second, third John, and he also wrote Revelation. So um, we're basically just looking at John to basically speak for himself in uh understanding the scripture hopefully that just made sense <laughs> but what time is it okay 10 56 we have an hour left basically um, I'm definitely going to try to keep these within that two hour frame because I know that a lot of you guys have things to do and some of you guys do end up watching this later, but I still want to keep it within that two hour frame. So whatever we don't complete, I'll just do the pre-recorded video for and that'll be the video for um, Friday, which is why I said that though this is an 11 week study, it might go over that just because some of the ver some of the chapters have long verses like 51, 72 verses. It's, it's, it's insane. But um I don't want to rush through John. I definitely want you guys to understand it and really get it. Um, because when I went through it the first time, I got a lot. But as I went through it a second time, um, I got so much more out of it. <laughs> so I'm enjoying doing the studies like this. Um, so, yeah. All right. So that's that for was the word. So that's just in the beginning was the word. And as you can see, we're pulling out a lot of things from just the first verse alone. The first five verses really are insane like if i showed you guys my actual journaling bible the one that i personally use to study you would see just those first five verses i have notes all over the place um so yeah so moving on to was the word uh i'm sorry the word was with god and the word was god so i'm gonna actually utilize this piece of paper here because i need more space so what i'm going to do is do verse one so that I know where it's coming from and I'm going to mark it with this purple highlighter so that I know it matches this underlining here. There we go. Let me just check. Um, okay. And again, if you want to see how I put this paper in here, check out the video on my channel. It's literally just glued in here. This is the uh, flap from it. I glued it down, but you can also use double sided uh, tape as well. So the word was with God and the word was God. So my notes are the word is God, but it is also a separate being from God because it does not encompass all that God is. This shows that there is a trinity, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in short, the word is a form of God. Um, and I know that's a lot, so I'm going to write it out. But uh, it says the word was with God. So the word was with God meaning that the word was there at the time standing right next to God at the time of creation but it also says that the word was God so how can the word 
be with him but also be him it's because it doesn't encompass everything that God is but it is God so I don't know if this is in frame I need to actually look at the camera quickly yes it is okay the word and there's a difference between word that's capitalized and word that's not capitalized um word with the capital w is actually a person which we do know is jesus christ which i'll get into um and then word without the capital is just like word <laughs> but the word is is god but also a separate being from God because it does not hey Angela yes oh my god Latasia that CSV Bible is so stunning. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going off topic for a second. But um, the CSV Bible is so stunning. And I had the older version, which was in the HCSV translation, which is that lavender and pink one that I showed in my videos um, on YouTube. But um, that just the new updated CSV is just so stunning. I love the floral print. It is so freaking pretty. <laughs> and it took me a minute to write in mine. But I think the only thing I do is highlight and um, underline in it. I don't think I write any notes. And my son is knocking on the door. I'm coming. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to uh, edit this video when I put it on YouTube with all the interruptions I get from my son. <laughs> but okay. Just want to make sure that this was in frame. Good morning, Tanya. No, um, what it is, is I do the live videos for one chapter on Tuesdays, and then on Fridays, I do a pre-recorded video that goes up on, um, YouTube, so it'll be two videos, it's basically two chapters a week is how I have it set up, just because it's a 21, it's 21 chapters in this book, and I didn't want to make it a 21 week study, I just thought that was a little excessive, so what it is, is on Tuesdays, I do the live recording for one chapter, um, and then that live recording will go up on Thursday on YouTube. And then on Friday, I upload a pre-recorded video. So, like, basically, if we can complete all 51 verses, which I'm pretty sure we're not because it's already 11.03. Um, but basically, what it would be is I would do a live on this whole chapter. And then chapter 2 would be the same kind of setup, but it would be pre-recorded. That way, you guys can see it in both a pre-recorded and a live um, way that way we can get through them in 11 weeks again it might go over that because the chapters are long again we've only got we're still on verse one it's 1103 <laughs> um so i know i'm not going to get through all 51 verses looking at the time now i'm just not and i don't want to go past 12 30 so whatever i don't complete i really just want to try to get at least all the way to verse 28 done on the live that way if anything i can just do verses 29 to 51 on a pre-recorded video for friday um so that's how i had it set up i was gonna go back to wednesdays um but i definitely wanted to have time to make the pre-recorded video so it's okay you didn't get it mixed up it's actually both on um tuesday and friday live videos on, on tuesday at 10 a.m and then the pre-recorded videos go up on fridays by 12 p.m um <laughs> Latasia <laughs> I know it's it's really hard, um, especially when the Bible is so pretty, uh, to mark it up. But I've gotten myself to um I don't know, I just I understand that when I do highlight and mark on my Bible I get a lot more. But um if that's the case, just get you a pretty journal and you're good to go because that's what i did um i actually have a video going up next week i think next week tuesday on how to actually do bible journaling without a journaling bible um because that's how i started off with studying the word of god but um that was a little off topic okay 
that's okay candy um we didn't get far as you can see we're still on a <laughs> we are still on verse one we're actually just now finishing up verse one um yeah i i have a feeling we're not gonna get that far and i'm gonna have to just pre-record the rest of it um because it's a lot like i said the printable when i posted it's 11 pages um worth of notes and cross references <laughs> I'm, the Gospel of John is going to be a really um, in-depth study, but I also don't want to make it overwhelming at the same time. So, you know, I have 11 weeks in mind. I'm not sure if it's going to go. It, it, it probably will go over 11 weeks. I'm just stating that now. But, um, yes, Marie, there definitely will be live video, um, live notes. They will go up once I uh, finish this video. I'm going to post those up because it, it it's it's 11 pages worth of notes. I mean, I, that's really all that I can say. It's 11 pages. <laughs> so, yeah, there will be live notes after this video goes up. That's awesome, Tasia. I do, too. Writing is, like, my favorite thing. One of my favorite things. Probably my favorite subject. I used to love writing essays and stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, we're, we're still on verse 1. Um, it, it's... It's 11.06. <laughs> so uh, let's pray that we can at least get through 28 verses in this video. But okay, okay, I'm going to come from the comments because if I stay in the comment section, I'm going to keep rambling and talking. So I'm going to go back so that we can get through. <laughs> so um, back to, uh, so right now what I'm doing is, okay, I'm, I'll review quickly. I did all my definitions. So with these words which I'll go through the definitions as I get through the verses. But um, the first thing that I did was in the beginning. Let me just make sure this is in frame. <laughs> yeah, okay, it is. So um, in the beginning is what I underlined first and I circled beginning. So beginning basically is starting point, origin, preeminent. Um, so in the beginning basically deliberately recalls the opening words of Genesis 1 and 1 and it implicitly emphasizes the identity of Christ. Um, and Genesis 1 and 1 reads in the beginning and that's basically what it reads so it has the same three three words that Genesis 1 and 1 has and then I have cross references here which are Colossians 1 verse 17 to 18 Revelations 1 um, verses 8 and 17 Revelations 21 verse 6 and then 22 13 then I underlined was the word um, because the word existed before creation, it is a being that was with God at the beginning of time. Now, I circled was because though it sounds silly, I under I understood that it was a key point. Um, so word was basically means I exist, I am, I have been, or I was. And then word with a capital W is logos, which is speech or divine utterance. So this is telling me that the word is an actual person because word is capitalized and that it was um, it existed prior to so I now understand just from this line here in the beginning was the word that the word existed for the beginning of time before the beginning of creation and it was with God at that time and that the word is an actual being what do I know about that I know that the word obviously is Christ and um, now we're on to this line here which says the word was with God and the word was God so the word is God, but it's also a separate being from God because it does not encompass, I was still writing, so it does not encompass all that God is. This proves that there is the Holy Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Proves the Holy Trinity. Because it's telling me that there's God and there's the Word. So obviously, if there's the Word, the Word is Jesus Christ, which we know. Um, there's God, so who else is there? Because you can't have these two without the other. So obviously, there's a Holy Spirit there as well. So, um... Holy Spirit and basically in short the word is a form of God so 
the word. Is a form of God. Um, and my computer is getting ready to die. So let's plug that in quickly. Okay. So the cross references I have for that are. Genesis 126 and Philippians 2.6. Yes. But something that I really want to. Um make a key point is that God utters his word to create and to reveal so God utters his word to create and reveal now I'm going to tell you guys what I mean by that in a second so we're going to go to Genesis 126 right now So Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. I hope you guys can see this. So down here it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So we understand that in the beginning, obviously Genesis 1 and 1 reads in the beginning, right? So in the beginning, we understand that there was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. That's basically God talking to the word. We know that the word is Jesus Christ. And he's also talking to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was actually hovering over the waters. And we know this if we see um, verse 2 in chapter 1. It says, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So you now have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit together at the beginning of creation, and that's how they created us in their image and their likeness. God didn't say, let me make man in my image and in my likeness. No, he said, in our image and our likeness after us. So um, that's that. And then we're going to go to Philippians 2, 6 quickly. Okay, so 2 6 reads, Who though he was in the form of God, I'm actually going to go back to verse 5. So, have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. So, we know that Christ is the form of God. We understand that Christ is the Word, and that the Word was there at the beginning of time, and that the Word is God and is not God at the same God. Um, I'm sorry, that the word is God and is not God at the same time. So it's a form of God, which means that it's Christ Jesus. Now, when I say that God utters his word to create and reveal, we know the meaning of word. So word is logos again. Word is logos, meaning speech and divine utterance, right? So if you go back to Genesis chapter one, <laughs> everything happens at the beginning. So looking at verse 3, it says, God said, let there be light, and there was. Going to verse 6, it said, God said, let there be an expanse, and there was. You go to verse 9, it says that God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered, and it did. Verse 11, God said. So throughout the whole part of Genesis, the first six days, um, sorry, the first five days, I believe, <laughs> um, God said, and there's my little one again. All these interruptions <laughs> but um basically god uses his word to reveal and create um he used it to create the world he used it to create whatever it is that he wanted to create um but also keep in mind that the word like i said is a, is a being so we know that the word is christ um so when christ came he said things and it happened he did things and it happened christ revealed god to us 
So um, I just thought that was something profound within that first verse. It is a lot. Um, the first verse definitely has a lot, which is why I said the first five verses is really like crucial, I think, to understanding the Gospel of John because it basically gets to the point of what it's going to be about. Okay, so now we can move on to verse 2. So, sorry if you guys hear my sibling and my son. Um, everyone's home. It's summer vacation. I didn't plan for my son to be home. I thought he was going to be with his dad um, for the month of July. So, just bear with me, please. <laughs> um, moving on. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. So I actually underlined that whole verse because it's not that long. He was in the beginning with God and I am going to use a zebra outliner and I want to use this gray because I'm obsessed with this gray. Like I just want to buy more of these just for this gray color because it's so pretty. So I'm using the fine points. Um, it does come with a find and an actual chiseled bold point. But he was in the beginning with God. Underlying that. Basically the word a separate being from God is not just the beginning. But it is the beginning of the beginning. He was there in the beginning before anything was. This proves that the father is distinct from the son. They are equally God yet separate persons. And if you guys don't know. Um, there are three persons in one God, which is God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> which is the Trinity. So that's that. And, um, that goes back into Genesis 126. So hold on. Let's, let's write these notes down because let me just stick this here so I can constantly have it with me. But, um, okay, so... The word is not just the beginning, and let me just check the camera to make sure this is in frame. That's good, Christine. I definitely would say um, to read it. Uh, why when you can because um, the first time through it can be confusing the second time through you're actually getting it and then as we study it you'll like be able to really see a lot more and um, as I'm leading these Bible studies I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna get like other revelations that I don't get so I definitely would suggest reading it um, it's a great thing to read and I I love the Gospel of John the Gospel of John is probably my favorite gospel ever um, I'm currently reading them backwards. So I read John, then I read Luke. I'm currently in Mark, and then I'm going to read through Matthew. Um, I know a lot of people say read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in order, but I personally think people should read the Gospels backwards. Um, I don't know. There's something more profound about it when you read it backwards. I have read through the Gospels in order as a kid, didn't understand it. But as an adult, reading it backwards, it's really amazing because I feel like the Gospel of John has a lot more meat to it than the other gospels do um and matthew is really all about the genealogy and matthew was a tax collector so um you know i don't know there's something about the book of matthew i just don't care for <laughs> but i do know that um some of his great parables are in th that um not parables his sermon on the mount is in the book of matthew so you know but i do i adore i adore adore john like john and then luke and then most likely mark because i'm actually enjoying mark now too but okay back to my notes <laughs> so um the word is not just the beginning but it's the beginning of the beginning so kind of like the origin of the beginning Um, he was there at the beginning of 
before anything was Okay, so the word is not just the beginning, but it's the beginning of the beginning. So it's kind of like the origin of the beginning. Um, the word was there at the beginning before anything was. This also proves that the father is distinct from the son and that they're equally God, yet separate persons. Um, so that's that. Notes for that verse. And this is verse 2. Um... Quickly, I want to just say that um, he was in a beginning with God. This reinforces Christ's divine nature by asserting his integral role in creation with God and also as God. So um, with God is basically his distinction of his identity. Um, he is standing right there with God at the beginning of time. He is basically equal to God. Um, but also as God, it recognizes um, his equality as a deity himself so it recognizes that he is God so it says he was with God in the beginning and then back in verse 1 it says the word was with God and the word was God so it's just basically recognizing that um, he's distinct from God but he is also equal to God Moving on to verse 3. Um, All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. I really want to underline that whole thing. Um, yeah, I'm just going to underline the whole thing of verse 3. Let's use a Crayola Twistable. Let's go with this blue, teal color. Okay. And we're going to stick my notes over here for the verse 3. So my notes for verse 3 state, um, the word is Jesus, so therefore Jesus is the creator and source for all. Nothing can be made apart from him. The word himself is therefore uncreated because it existed before everything. So I'm going to write the word equals Jesus. Because I think that's something, oh, sorry. <laughs> I think that's something that people need to understand is that the word is Jesus Christ. Um, some people don't know that and don't get that, but the word is Jesus Christ. So I just want to get that um, laid out off the bat. The word is Jesus. Um, so therefore, Jesus is the creator and source of all. Nothing can be made apart from him. The word is uncreated.
existed before everything. Then I have cross references, which are Psalms 33 and 6, Romans 11, 36, 1 Corinthians 8 and 6, Colossians 1 and 16, and Hebrews 1 and 2. But I also have a note that I wanted to make sure people knew. Is that God created all through his word and there's my son again oh my gosh <laughs> parentheses except man yes Okay, so I'm going to break this down. So, um, the word is Jesus. Jesus is the creator and source of all. Nothing can be made apart from him. So, therefore, everything that we see on this earth, everything that we do, um, cannot be done outside of Jesus. Um, and if it is, it's not right, which is why most of the time if we do something, um, that is separated from Christ, it doesn't feel good or we feel incomplete and um, the word is uncreated. It existed before everything. So going to my note where it says God created all things through his word. Um, like I said at the beginning in Genesis 1, 3, it says God said. It says God said a lot. And whenever he said, it happened. So God said, uh, let there be light. There was light. God said, let the water gather. It gathered. God said, let there be land, birds, all that. And it happened, right? That, that was with everything except for man, right? So... God created all things through his word, which means that his word is the source of all creation. His word that we know is Jesus Christ. So, again, this proves the Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. This proves that Jesus was there at the beginning of time. And um, it lets us know that anything outside of Christ, anything outside of Jesus or the word of God, which is in this text, um, will not really satisfy or complete you. Um, so going down to the cross references, Psalm 33 and 6, I'm sorry, wait, yeah, 33 and 6. So 33 and 6 reads, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. Um, so everything was created by God's word, but through his breath, um, he created man. So the word being Christ Jesus, the word that he speaks, his divine utterance. Going to Romans 11.36. So 11.36 reads, For him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. 1 Corinthians 8 and 6. First Corinthians reads, yet for us, there is one God, the father from, from whom all, sorry, eight and six reads first Corinthians, yet for us, there is one God, the father from whom are all things and for whom we exist and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. So we cannot exist apart from Christ. We cannot exist apart from God. Um, if you exist apart from Christ and therefore you exist apart from God. And you, it just, it's impossible because then you feel incomplete about anything that you do. So I hope that made sense. Um, moving on to, in him was life and the life was the light of men. So in him was life. And then the life was the light of men.
let's use orange and yellow. Sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> Um, but in him was life, I underlined, and then the life was the light of men, I also underlined. I'm probably going to need more paper <laughs> for my notes. But um, verse 4, I'm going to put over here. So in him was life. Basically, the word is the source of all life. I mean, it's just that simple. And I'm actually going to put this up here. And the cross-reference I have for that is 1 John 5.11. So, the word had life. So it's the source of all life. Um, 1 John 5, 11. We're going to read that. And this is a testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So the word, which is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the son of God gives eternal life so that's within him so therefore the word is the source of all life and the life was the light of men so if the word is christ that means that he is what gives us life and he lights our path at all times to god and he also gives us revelation so And I have Psalms 36, verse 9. Again, so... The life was the light of men. He gives us life. He lights our path. And he reveals God to us. The cross reference I have for that is Psalms 36 and 9. Thirty-six and 9 reads, For with you is a fountain of life. In your light do we see the light. So, that proves that. Moving on to verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So, the light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. I'm going to use brown for this last part. Oh, that's a little dark. I don't think. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. It still didn't really bleed through. That's actually impressive. <laughs> um, and let's use this peach. Okay. What time is it? 11.35. Okay. Let me see if you have any questions. Okay. Nope. Good. Okay. So the light shines in the darkness. So... I do want to break down what light and darkness means. So light and darkness in the context of this scripture. 
Light refers to goodness and the holiness of God. Basically, those who are for Christ. And then darkness refers to wickedness and rebellion, which are those who oppose God. So, or oppose Christ. So, the light shines in the darkness. Basically, the word enlightens and reveals God to us, which is what I said. already so the word And there's something else that I want to write, and I'm probably just going to wing this off the top of my head. But, um... Light can break through any dark area. Um, so understanding that it doesn't matter how confused I can get. Because I, I, I consider like confusion and depression darkness. So it doesn't matter how like confused or depressed a person can get. If you have a little bit of the word in you. A little bit of the light which is the word of God. Which is Jesus Christ in your life. Um, it can break through any amount of darkness. And um, many don't believe it, but I do. I'm a living witness that it, it definitely can. So, I don't know. That's just when I'm writing. Light can break through any dark area. Definitely, if you have any other revelations concerning that verse, I would say write it. But for me, that's what I'm getting. Um... The darkness has not overcome it. I'm sorry, guys. I did have a cross reference. I knew I did. First John 2 and 8. And again, like I said, we're, we're really just coming from John himself because he wrote for his second, third John and Revelation. So, um, first John 2 and 8. Um, so it says, at the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. So the darkness has not overcome it. I'm going to write that over here. Basically, light cannot lose against darkness. The darkness will never understand it. The wicked and rebellious at heart will never understand Christ, no matter how much we try to make them. Unless they allow Jesus to enlighten and the Holy Spirit to give them revelation, they are and will stay spiritually dull or spiritually dead. Um, but this also previews the victorious outcome of Christ's work on the cross. So I'm going to write previews. Jesus' work on the cross, which is his death and resurrection. Um, light. Cannot lose. against darkness and this is this is when i go back to like the whole depression thing um i'm gonna be using depression a lot because i battled with depression i battled with suicide i, I battled with a lot of that and um i really thought i could never get out of it 
and though I was saved, I got baptized, I knew Jesus Christ, I knew God, I knew all of that. Um, I felt like I was just shrouded in a cloud of like darkness consistently. Everything was going wrong to me. Everything just didn't make sense. Nothing mattered. Nothing seemed right. But um, it was in those small moments, like if I picked up a book and it had an inspiring word, it would remind me of God. Um, if I saw a cloud or a pretty flower, like I remember in my darkest moments, I would go sit in the park um, and just look at the flowers. Um, I was obsessed with flowers and clouds at that time. Um, and I feel like that was more so God speaking to me through nature um, because I was like in a deep, dark space place at that time um my family and i we were displaced um we had some situations going on with my dad and it, it was a lot going on then i had got a job then i had to leave my job and it was it was a lot um and i remember i used to love going to the park just to look at the flowers just fly it, it didn't have to be like a specific flower it could be the simplest flower and that simple little flower was like a light for me in my darkness but um we know that that flower understanding from verses one through five that everything was created through the word the word of jesus christ and that jesus christ is the son of god and that jesus christ is also fully god and fully man so i still had that little bit of light coming from the word itself to really break through my darkness um so i can attest that light cannot lose against darkness like ever no matter how much we feel like we're shrouded in darkness there will always be a symbol of light to get us through to break through to us in that darkness um yes yeah, so i just wanted to say that but light cannot lose against darkness and darkness will never understand light understand light um basically the wicked will never understand christ unless they allow him And to do a work. And what I mean by that is I'm pretty sure a lot of us have people in our lives who um, we consider to be in darkness. We consider them to be rebellious and wicked. Um, I know I have one person in particular within my family that actually a few people, but one person in particular um, that I feel I want them to see the light. Like I want them to understand God and understand Christ, but no matter how much. I've tried to speak to this person about it no matter how many times I tried to help them understand. They won't understand unless they themselves allow Christ to do a work in them. They won't understand the light of God, the light of Christ, unless they allow it to happen. Um, I can sit and talk about it all the time. I can do Bible studies with them. I can send them scriptures. Though I'm being the light that God created me to be um, and helping them to seek out Jesus on their own. I can't help them understand it. They have to be able to understand it on them on their own, but they can't do that unless they allow Christ in. So that's that. Um, the darkness has not overcome it. So again, for verse five, previews Jesus's work on the cross. Light cannot lose against darkness, and darkness will never understand light. The wicked will never understand Christ unless they allow Him to do a work in them. If not. They remain spiritually dead. But also this can also go along with those who are in Christ. Because there are those who believe in Christ, who know God. But um, still choose to be rebellious at times. So then therefore they're spiritually dull. There are people who you may think are all about God. But when you really look at them. Um, you can tell that they're not dead, but their spiritual life is so dull um, that 
you know, it needs to be awakened, but you can't force them to awaken it. I know a few people in my life who are in Christ, who have been saved, who everything, you know, but their spiritual life is so dull. It's not dead, but it's it's kind of like um, a thread that's really like um, getting ready to snap, but it hasn't snapped yet. If you've ever seen like that up close and personal, how thread looks when it looks like it's getting ready to pop. It's kind of like that, and you really can't reinforce that thread by telling them. They have to be able to do that on their own. So, Cross-reference I have for that is John... 319 which I'll quickly read that John 319 reads um, and this is a judgment the light has come into the world and the and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil so people are not going to accept light and understand light unless they want to you can't force them unfortunately um, there are some people I would love to smack upside the head and force them to accept the light of God, the love of God. But I can't force that on them. They have to be able to accept it on their own. So that's that. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Stacey. I'm just seeing this. It's 11.47. Um, I'm trying to see because we're not, we're not going to get through all of this. And I knew we weren't, but I just, I don't know. Do you guys, um, I'm going to ask you this simple question. Do you guys mind if the study goes beyond 11 weeks? Because as you can see, we've basically been going for two hours and um, we're, we only got to verse five. And um, when I study this with my siblings, it took us an hour just to get through five verses because it is a lot. So do you guys mind if we are in chapter one a little longer? Um, say two weeks um, I can do yeah two weeks basically because it's a lot of information and I don't want to overwhelm you but I also don't want to rush through this study like at all because I think it's crucial to really understand the gospel of John um, the gospel of John will really open up your eyes and help you um, and encourage you to actually dive into the word for yourselves because that's what happened with me um, I studied the gospel of John and I've been flying in my word ever since. <laughs> so I'm going to try to finish up with 6 and 8. Um, 6, 7, and 8. <laughs> because, yeah, I'm looking at the time now and I don't want to go over. Okay, great, great. Yeah, so we might be in um, chapter 1 for a minute. I still will upload the notes for you guys after this live session. Definitely we will still have that so you guys can look that over and follow along. Um, I'm going to pre-record probably verses 19 to 34, probably, and then do a live session on the last half. Um, just because it's, it's so much stuff and it's so good. And um, I just, I love, I love the Gospel of John. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I just love the Gospel of John. But um, I'm going to finish up <laughs> with... Um, Okay, great, great, great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to take our time. Um, I did mention it prior to, like, starting the study that it might go over 11 weeks. But you guys are seeing for yourselves why. Because it's a lot. <laughs> but, okay, going on to verse 6. Did I have anything for verse 6, actually? I did. Okay. So, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And um, underlining that it's like every verse has something that you want to remember. Um, but there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And where do I want to put this note? Let's just put it here. Verse 6. Let's use another zebra mild liner. I really like this purple. So. It actually looks like the purple highlighter from. Um, Sharpie. But. Okay, there was a man. I don't even know if this is in frame. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. So there was a man sent from God whose name was John. So we know the definition of sent. Um, the Greek word is apostolaminos. I'm probably saying apostolaminos. I don't know. But um, it means to commission, to order one to go to a place appointed. So we know that John was um, ordered to go to an appointed place. He had a specific purpose. He was set apart. And if you want to know more about John, um, and let me clarify. When I say John, um, I'm talking about John the Baptist because there are two Johns. There is the author of the gospel according to John, which is John the Apostle or the disciple John. And um, then you have John the Baptist. Now, one thing you need to know is that both John the Apostle and John the Baptist were both cousins to Jesus. Um, John the Baptist was the first cousin to Jesus. And um, the Apostle John, I believe, yes, was also a cousin. I have it all written down, I think, in the introductory packet. One of those introductory packets. But, um, yeah. So, let's see. Okay, so we understand that being sent basically means that John, the the Baptist, um, not the apostle, so John the Baptist was sent from God for a specific purpose. He was commissioned to go to a place for a specific purpose. So, um, I'm going to write, referring to John the Baptist, I don't know why I just did that, but whatever, referring to... John the Baptist and I'm gonna say that a lot because I don't want to get people confused because I know the first time I read this I got so confused because I didn't know that there was a difference between John and John the Baptist I actually thought they were the same person until I actually studied it again and realized that they're two different beings so I'm gonna be saying John the Baptist a lot and even in the notes um, when I'm referring to John the Baptist I do let you guys know so you don't get confused but um Referring to John the Baptist. He was commissioned. To go. To. An appointed place. To be a representative. Of Jesus and um, the cross reference I have for that is Malachi 3 1 so let's quickly go to Malachi Malachi 3 1 um, it reads behold I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So that messenger, if you read the Gospel of Luke, um, actually, let me go to Luke right now. But I should have included it. But um, um. If you read Luke chapter 1 verses 5 to 25, it really talks about the birth of um, John the Baptist foretold and what his purpose would be. So definitely Luke chapters 1 and 2 will give you more information about John the Baptist. But um, that's that basically where it says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is referring to John the Baptist, not John the Apostle. And um, he was basically commissioned to go to an appointed place. To be a personal representative of Jesus. Um, and the cross reference for that is Malachi 3.1. But also Luke 1 in, in its entirety. Because it talks about John the Baptist a lot. Um, so moving on to 7. He came as a witness. I'm going to underline he came as a witness. And I'm going to use this blue color here. So he came as a witness. Verse 7. And 
my siblings are all up. My son is acting crazy. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. <laughs> I do have a mic connected to my cell phone because I think the mic gives better audio. But the mic picks up every single sound. <laughs> but um, he came as a witness. So basically, John the Baptist will become an aid to the faith by testifying of Jesus. So, and we know that witness is... um evidence given and what one testifies so John the Baptist would become an aid to faith by testifying of Christ he really talks about the Messiah and the Christ to come um, so that's that and the cross reference I have is Acts 19 and 4 so he came as a witness John the Baptist will become an aid to the faith by testifying of Christ the cross reference is Acts 19 and 4 And 19 and 4 is down here. I'm not sure if it's on the camera. Let me check. Okay. So it says, And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come. After him, that is Jesus. So um, his purpose really was to baptize with water to really get people's hearts ready to um, repent, basically. And to believe in the Messiah that was to come. And we know that the Messiah is Jesus Christ. Who Jesus Christ is also the word. And the word is God. And you see how that all correlates and um, really lines up together. And I'm probably going to make a chart. Um, and add it to the PDF file. Kind of the correlation between the word and back to Genesis. I don't know. I'm going to tr try to work that out. But um, that's that. Um... So he came as a witness to be a witness about the light. So bear witness about the light is what I'm going to underline. And I'm also going to underline that all might believe through him. I'm still going to need to use a sticky note. <laughs> that is funny. John is just so good. It's so, so, so good. And um, let me underline also 8. So he was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. So I'm going to underline that whole verse. And um, what color do I want to use? I want to use this green. So, using the green. What I'm going to use is a cute little unicorn. Because I think the unicorn is so stinking cute. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so verse 7. This is still verse 7. Yeah, everybody in my house is up. So, it's 12 o'clock now. I'm just going to finish this up and we can be done for today. But verse seven um so bear witness about the light basically his purpose was to give a good report of the coming messiah it's as simple as that so john the baptist purpose was to give A good report of the coming Messiah and verse 7 again
um, where it says that all might believe through him. Um, his ministry focused on bringing people to the faith of Jesus. So, John the Baptist is ministry focused on bringing people to the faith of Jesus. Sorry if you heard my son. <laughs> and then, oh my gosh, my son is loud. I don't know if you guys can hear him. <laughs> Verse 8 is the last one we're going to do for today. Um, he was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. His work was well received and known. Okay, hold on, guys. I'm sorry. I just want to finish this up, and he is loud. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> okay, so verse 8, last verse. Um, I don't know why that just got out of focus. Okay. So verse 8 basically reads, um, he was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. Basically, his work was well received and known, but he was not the one that could give true light. He only pointed to the true light. And what I mean by that is that um, as you read, as we continue to read in the Gospel of John, we will see a lot of people accept everything that the, John the Baptist says. But when it comes to Christ, many people didn't accept what he said. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. So John the Baptist's work was well received and known. But he was not the one to give true light. He pointed to that light. So again, um, John the Baptist's work was well received and known, but he was not the one to give true light. He simply pointed to that light. So I'm going to stick my post-its down. Yeah, this is going to be a long one. I might have to add another page <laughs> in here. But um, that is it for today uh <laughs> we only got eight verses in but you can see that it's a lot within just those simple eight verses i am still going to upload the file oh yes christine um you can just focus on john chapter one for this week um but if you want, you can also read chapter two. I definitely advise you guys just to read ahead of time if you can. Um, so that you can get it for yourselves, if that makes sense. But yeah, just for this first week and probably next week as well, we're going to really be focusing on um, chapter one. Because chapter one has a lot um, and it's kind of the, the beginning portion. I titled it The Word and the Witness because this really talks about the word and who the word is and the word becoming flesh and how Jesus dwelt among us but then it also gives four different accounts of witnesses to who the word Jesus Christ is so um we're gonna spend some time on that I probably should have mentioned this prior to but I thought that I could get through all 51 verses but now I can't um we've only gotten through eight <laughs> so that's pretty much it um uh, just grabbing this book so yeah that's pretty it pretty much it for this um <laughs> john chapter one verses one through eight for the day two hour session because i don't want to continue going over um i'm not sure if you guys can hear my son and my siblings but they are loud and crazy and it's summer so yeah and i need to run to the post office as well but um yeah so we're done with that also 
I hope you guys are reading your cling books. I am loving going through this going through this book again. Um uh this time I'm taking a lot more notes. Just showing you guys what it looks like. I did a flip through on um, my Instagram. But like I'm just like re-highlighting things and writing in the margin this time. I don't know, I'm really loving it. So like I said, I did re-clean before, so some of these notes were like already underlined, but I'm going back through and highlighting and stuff like that. So I'm I'm enjoying clean, like reading it again. So just for the week, um, we're going to be reading the introduction of Kling, and then next Monday we'll dive into chapter one. And I do that because I know not a lot of people read fast. Um, some people like to take their time. So we're definitely doing one chapter a week with Kling, and then with the gospel according to John. I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit flow because <laughs> the intent was to do two chapters a week, but we're probably going to have to be on some chapters a little longer. But um, that is pretty much it for today. Do you guys have any quick questions? Okay, so if you guys have questions later on, because I'm not sure if my computer is just slow or not. But um, if you do have questions, just you can message me on my personal page on the daughter of increase page you can put it in the group um i know i was away from the group for a while just because of everything with um a plot trying to get the job but you guys know the story with that it didn't go through um but i've been away but i'm back full force um ready to get back in the group and i do have three giveaways coming during the course of the book club and the bible study um the first giveaway will probably be at the end of july most likely because i want to get um a nice package together for that but that is it and i will see you guys in the next video because my little one is crying and screaming so yeah i'll see you guys later bye